welcome to the Seek First CEO podcast, a community for high achieving kingdom women committed to seeking God first and keeping God first in all we do. If you believe you're called to impact the world through your gifts, then you're in the right place. Hi friend, I'm Heather, teacher turned speaker and your host of the Seek First CEO podcast. I'm passionate about helping ambitious servant hearted women find their worth in whose they are, not what they do. As a certified master neuroscience life coach, I help you connect the dots between biblical principles and brain science so you can take your thoughts captive and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I don't do surface, so we go deep here and we talk about the stuff underneath the surface because I want to help you get to the source of your heart set and mindset roadblocks so you can have breakthrough by aligning your heart and mind with biblical truths. If your heart's desire is to grow in your relationship with Jesus while fearlessly fulfilling your purpose and calling, then let's open up the word together and see what the Holy Spirit has to say about living your life in flow with him. Are you ready? Then get excited for today's episode. Hello, friend. We are wrapping up Business Tree Bootcamp with this episode. As a reminder, if you missed episodes one through four, which today is one through four, go back, listen to them. They are so good. Today is a heavy one, so I hope you're ready. I pray that you are blessed. And if you would like more coaching, more mentoring, more training on this kind of content, I want to invite you to become a member of the inner circle. Would love to see you on the inside, and I pray that this episode blesses you. People always say you gotta find find something that you would that you would do for free. Find something that you love that doesn't feel like work. And this is that. And so I just want to thank you for allowing me to do what I do and for allowing me to use the gifts that God has given me. And so what a, what a privilege, what an honor. Um, so as you are hopping on here, I want you, I'm going to ask you this big question. What do you think is the reason you struggle? If you're struggling, if you're not struggling, what is the reason that, cause you don't always have to struggle, right? We don't always have to be riding the struggle bus. Usually ebbs and flows a little bit, but in seasons of your life, good morning, Michelle. Hi, Bernadette. Good morning, Crystal. In seasons of your life, when you were struggling, whether that's now or whenever, why do you think so? Because that's what we're talking about today in Business Tree Bootcamp. The number one reason that I believe Christians struggle in business that no one is talking about, no one's selling the solution for. Um, And I don't want to leave you there because that could sound really discouraging. I want you to know that you can do something about it. You can do something about it. And I want to share that with you today. So I've got a lot jam packed for you today. Um, I just know God wants to move. And so I'm going to dive right in. And so I want you, as you are hopping on here, whether you're watching the replay, listening to the podcast, I want you to be really thinking about why do you think is the number one reason that you have struggled and or you see other believers struggling? Because we're going to tackle this today. And I just believe, I keep hearing the word freedom, healing, freedom, breakthrough. Those of you who have been feeling stuck, those of you who have been feeling like you can't, you don't know what to do. There's lack of clarity, all these things. I just believe God is going to bring you healing, breakthrough, and freedom through today's lesson. So let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you that you are such a good, good father, that you are our healer. Jesus, that we thank you for the price that you paid um, to cover all of our yuck uh, of us and of other people. Lord, we just thank you for that. And so God, I just ask you, Um, to speak to each woman, Holy Spirit, meet them where they are, give them what they need. Holy Spirit, anoint my lips so that I speak um, the things that are just glorifying and honoring to you. This boot camp is all for your glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, here we go. Day five, the number one reason y'all might be struggling because listen, I have struggled. I still struggle. And I think that's something that we want to talk about. I actually just got done interviewing a, a, a guest for my podcast. And I said to her, you know, I think my listeners really enjoy hearing the journey, hearing the struggle, because listen, you, you may be watching this and you think, oh man, this girl's got it figured out. And listen, I wrestle, I struggle, I cry. I, I have to, I have to figure out, you know, why am I feeling stuck? Why am I feeling afraid? Why am I feeling your feelings are like flashlights. And so as I have worked with hundreds and thousands of women in this space, in a variety of different ways, I see a common string, a common thing happening. And I want you to know, you don't have to remain there. And so let's let's dive in. Before we do that, I want to just remind you of all of the giveaways. And so 
Uh, there are giveaways specifically for this week and participating in boot camp and, and that. And you guys know every day that I was asking you to share your takeaways on social media and in our Facebook group. I absolutely love how God is speaking to each of you. It's interesting to see like who picks up what from, from the, from the, the lesson, the workshop of the day. And so I love that. So please share tag business tree boot camp, tag me on social so that I can see that. So my love language, one of them is gifts. And so I love doing gifts. I don't always like packaging them up, but I love giving gifts to people. So some of the giveaways I'm doing, I'm doing a Seek for CEO gift box. There's going to be one of you lucky, and I think lucky uh, is real, but you, I always tell my kids, there's no such thing as luck. We are blessed. So one of you blessed ladies are going to receive a Seek for CEO little swag gift box with some goodies in it. Um, one of you are going to receive a 30-minute one-on-one coaching call. And then one of you are going to receive a three-month scholarship into the inner circle. I've been sharing a lot about that this week. And so there's that. And I also decided, was kind of talking to my team about, listen, I, I feel like there's something else I want to give. And so I am going to do a special giveaway specifically for those women who said, yes, like I, I want help. I want mentorship. I want coaching. And I want to be surrounded by women who, who, who get me. Right. And so if you have already joined, or if you choose to join this this uh, today, in the next 24 hours, I am going to be doing a giveaway specifically for my signature program, Made to Flow Mastermind. My Made to Flow, really, it's a mentor mind where I walk you through the neuroscience and the biblical principles, and I help tie those together so that you can not be controlled by your emotions but and your feelings and your thoughts, but that you can actually control them so that you walk out your calling. So anyone who's already signed up, you're already in the giveaway. There's been quite a few of you who signed up and anyone who signs up today in the next 24 hours, um, you also get to be entered into that big giveaway. That's worth uh, several thousand dollars. So there's that. Um, I do. I love what I do. I, I, I could I literally, I could talk to you guys all day long about Jesus and business. Um, and so that is what we're doing. So if you would like to win one of those, whether it's the swag bag, the coaching call, the mastermind, the inner circle, all the things, drop some party emojis below and let's do this thing today. All right. So how do you like to travel? Well, the last few years, we have all been impacted by travel quite a bit. I haven't traveled nearly as much as I like to, and I, I, I love to. When I was in network marketing, that was like one of my favorite things. I got to travel around the world with my family for free. My ch- children have been to Costa Rica, Mexico. Uh, they've been all over the world, and it's been super, super fun. And I miss traveling, but thankfully, I actually am traveling in a few weeks to speak at a retreat specifically for network marketers. I'm super excited about that to head to Florida, but I love traveling. I love it. I love it. And so uh, there's some things about it. I don't know if you like to travel. Maybe you're the the road trip kind of a girl, or maybe you're the flight kind of a person, but I, I love to fly. I'm much more of that. My husband's more of the road trip kind of guy, but there are some things that I love about traveling. I love the airport. I love people watching. Anyone else love people watching? Um, I love meeting new people. I am not a stranger to the person next to me at the airport. I have no problem talking to people. I love getting out of my normal routine, my normal environment. I like, you know, usually I buy new clothes for trips, all the things. I like exploring new places. I love trying new food. That's one of my favorite things. And if I'm traveling for work and my kids aren't with me, then I love sleeping in my own bed by myself with no, no, no one waking me up and no diapers to change. And so I love to travel. And while I love traveling, there is this one thing that puts me in a panic every time I have a traveling flight of some sort. Now I am so paranoid, like to the nth degree of forgetting my driver's license. So typically this is how it works. Uh, the, the day of, I will make sure I have my license. Cause you know, I don't know, maybe it just magically disappeared. And so I make sure it's in my wallet. And then before I go to bed at night, I check my wallet. Do I have my license? Is it there? Do I have my passport? Whatever it is I need in the morning, I check it several times, just making sure my kids didn't move it or I didn't somehow mysteriously misplace it. And I 
check in and check in. I've also been known to be driving down the road fast because uh, I'm, I'm just like by the skin of my teeth going to make my flight. And I have my hand in my purse over on the side, trying to find my wallet. Cause in my head, there is something telling me, what if you don't have your license? Oh my goodness. You've got to make sure that you have your license. And I pull it out, you know, I'm like, I won't tell you how fast I may be going, but you know, I do not, I don't follow the rules sit at the airport for two hours before your flight. I'm like, I'm there a minute before I need to be. And that's how it goes. So please tell me I'm not alone. Like I sometimes have felt a little crazy when I have these, these travel plans and I, I know the routine. I do it. Um, I, I tell me I'm not alone. Is there anyone else license? Okay. Wendy, you say you're the same license or passport. Yes. Okay. And I got to thinking about this one day and I got to thinking about why, why am I so like paranoid about this? And it dawned on me, I know that if I don't have my ID, I can't get to my destination. If I go to the airport and I show up and I go to the security counter and, you know, or they're saying like, okay, are you ready to, do I need to print your flight? All these things. If I don't have my ID, I can't get to where I want to go. Friends, that is true for us in our calling. If we don't know who we are and whose we are, the giver of the ID, we cannot get to our destination. So today I wanna to talk with you about four things that you need to get to your destination. This business that you have, and God has many destinations I believe for us, but specifically we're gonna be talking about the context of our, our calling, this business thing that we so deeply desire to do because we know it's so much bigger than ourselves. We know that it serves such a bigger purpose than just making money. We are literally having an opportunity to impact the kingdom through something that we love and we get to do. So let's talk about four things that you need to get to your destination. Because I believe that there's, there's one specific thing here um, that is holding Christian entrepreneurs back from getting to that destination. And we're going to dive in today because I'm saying no more, no more. There's no more confusion. There's no more need for feeling stuck. There's no more need for uh, exhausting ourselves, trying to figure it out. And there's no more reason for just staying complacent and stuck where we are or running away from the very assignment that God's given us. I want you to run in freedom and do the thing that God has called you to do because there are people who need what he's asked you to do. Just like Esther, they needed her. Just like Moses, they needed him to get out of, out of slavery. Just like Noah, they needed him. The world needed him to build the ark. And all those things might feel a little bit scary, but listen, sometimes your feelings lie to you. And some of you are letting your feelings dictate what you're doing rather than letting the word of God and the Holy Spirit guide you into truth. So number one, what do you need? What do you need to get to your destination? Drop below, ticket. Drop in the comments. I need a ticket. You need a ticket, right? You don't go anywhere without a ticket. You don't go to the airport. I don't know. I mean, maybe there are some people that go and they buy the ticket at the airport, but I'm always looking for a good deal, right? I'm looking for a good deal so that I can get to wherever I'm going and not paying an arm and a leg. The ticket for you to get to where God's calling you to go is called vision. God has a vision for your life and you need to know what that vision is. Vision is your ticket to be able to get to where you, not where you want to go. It's to where God wants to take you. Listen, some of you are on the wrong plane. I have been on the wrong plane, going in the wrong direction all the while where there was something even better for me that God had for me. And that took a season of surrender to say, you know what? Not my, not my desires and my will and what I think is best for me, but God, what you think is best for me. Listen, if your brain can't see it, it can't work toward it. And if the vision that you have in your head is wrong and not aligned to the vision that God has for you, you're going to be headed in the wrong direction. You probably heard that if you're one degree off on an airplane, it literally will take you to like another country. Sometimes we're just one degree off and God wants to get us back on track and back in alignment. So the Bible tells us where there is no vision, the people will perish. So if you feel like you're perishing, that is not a fun feeling. We have probably all been there at one point or another. I want to encourage you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He has a plan. He created you in your mother's womb. He already knew what he was like her. That's the assignment. And we've got to have that vision of what are you doing, God? That doesn't mean that we need to know every, listen, control freaks. 
perfectionist, that does not mean he's going to give you every single thing in sequential order so that you can like, you know, feel safe to do this thing. No, he's going to ask you to trust me. Trust me. I'm going to give you the vision. I'm giving you the ticket. Now trust me, especially if you're like me, God does not give me steps A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. He gives me like Z and then he gives me A. And then once I do yes to A, then he gives me B. And then he gives me C and he's like, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Is that you? Is that just me? Is that you? Um, So if you are lacking vision, if you're lacking clarity on the assignment on your life, my best advice to you is to spend time with the Lord. He's not hiding anything from you to just frustrate you and keep you stuck. His word says to go to him and he'll tell you hidden things, unsearchable, great and unsearchable things that you don't know. Jeremiah 33, three, spend time with the Lord. You can't get to your final destination without a ticket. You can't get to this thing that you, your heart and listen, your spirit, like we were created for, for, for something bigger. We were created for this thing. And so there's like this spirit, your spirit's like yearning for that. And your flesh is like, oh, that, I don't know. And your soul, like there's all these, and we're talking a little bit more about that today, but God is the only one that can actually give you this assignment. And so how do you get that? Well, you spend time with him and not, you don't spend, and let me just preface this. I don't don't believe you should just spend time with him so that he gives you something. You spend time with him because he's the giver of all good things. And he, he just wants to get to know you. He wants to be with you. I want to say this though. If you are struggling to know the vision that God has for you and you don't, and you're like, Heather, that sounds good. Spend time with the Lord. But I really wrestle with that. Like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that looks like. I would love to help you because I was raised in a Christian home and I didn't really know what that meant. Talk to the God. And I, even to my kids, I'll say, well, did you ask God? And they're like, you know, they'll say things like, well, why? He doesn't talk back to me. I'm like, well, that's, that's the whole point. We want to get to that relationship where he does talk back to you and what that looks like for you. And so if you're kind of like, I don't know how to talk to God, I want to invite you to do, and you feel like you like, don't know your, your purpose. You don't know your calling. I want to invite you join Bloom Academy. Um, well, someone is calling me. We'll just ignore that. Um, I want to invite you to Bloom Academy. It is the group coaching program that God walked me through personally in the season of crying out in desperation. God, why am I here? Why did you create me? Like, what is this? What I do, whatever the assignment is. It's the program that was birthed out of those pains, crying out to the Lord on a walk. And we are going to walk you through that as a team. If you want that, comment bloom below. If you're like, I, I need that. I need that. And we'll, we'll touch base with you. And we're going to share more about that in the upcoming weeks. But I, I know that there's someone here who is wrestling with what is this and how do I actually talk to God? We want to help you. All right. So you need a ticket. That's number one. Number two, you need your ID. You need your license. You need your passport. You need this thing. You need identification. Your license or your passport when you're at the airport, that is proof of who you are. And sometimes we walk around not knowing who we are. And sometimes we walk around carrying a fake ID. The enemy is going to test you at every checkpoint, right? He does not want you to continue to further in your calling because he wants to say, oh, can I trick her into thinking that she's not actually who she is and that Jesus, that didn't really, you know, all those things don't really matter. Yeah. So there's checkpoints at the airport. There's checkpoints when you travel, the enemy is going to test you at every single one of those. And so rather than being afraid of the checkpoint and frantically, you know, in your purse, like me, knowing who you are before you get there and knowing that you, who you are as a child of God, friend, you are a citizen of heaven. I have a sweatshirt that says that. I love it. Citizen of heaven. Have you ever thought about that? What does that actually mean? If you are in fact born again, if you have given your life to the Lord and you have said, Jesus, I want you to be my savior. Cause you did that. You paid the price and Jesus, I want you to be my Lord. When you are born again. Your spirit was renewed. Your spirit was born again. You're not of this world. You're a citizen of heaven. And so what does that mean that you are a kingdom citizen, a citizen of heaven? Do you actually embrace those truths? And what does that really mean? You have to know who you are and you have to know who God is. Those two important questions that you answer every day in order for you to get to your destination. So what you believe about God, it's crucial. What you believe about yourself, it's crucial. And I just want to say this affirmations. They're not enough. You need something that actually lasts affirmations. They're quick, right? 
And this is where the neuroscience kind of matches with biblical truths of wait, God says to take our thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. Wait, God also says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that mean? How do we do that? We've got to learn how to do that because at each checkpoint, we're going to be questioned. We're going to be tested. We're going to be stretched. Do you actually know who you are as a child of God, as a citizen of heaven, as a kingdom, as a king of a of a this kingdom that God has? You are a king. Jesus is the king of kings. Do you actually know that? Listen affirmations kind of like fake fake IDs. Like they might've worked in college, right? But uh, they are not going to work in the kingdom and they're not going to work to get you to your final destination. And they're going to put that under that light and say, is she being fake or is she being real? God cares about the truths written deep in your heart and soul. God cares about those things. The enemy does too. And so that's why he's after it. Your subconscious, what you actually believe under the surface, not who you show up as on social media, but who you are when you're crying, when you are stressed out, when you're, when you're frustrated, God cares about that person. So some of you, it's time to just turn in that fake ID and pick up your real one as, as that citizen of heaven, as that child of God, as that King who is under the authority of the King of all Kings, which is Jesus. So how do you do that? We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about how do you actually do that? Um, so the next thing that you need, you need luggage. You going somewhere? Listen, if you are the girl who has a back backpack as a carry on, I don't know that we can be friends. I just don't know. I am the type of girl that I am like packing it to the gills and I'm just praying that it's under 50 pounds so that I don't have to pay, pay that extra, that extra fee. All right. So tell me who's, where are my carry on girls? Where am I? carry on girls that they're like, yep, I'm going to care. I'm a carry on. I admire you. I have never traveled anywhere with a maybe. Okay. Maybe like that's a lie. Maybe like once I can't even recall when it was, um, that would be a huge, uh, just a win for me. I'm using all 50, 49, 50 pounds. I'm using all 50 pounds. Um, because I got a lot, I got a lot to take with me, but I am that kind of a girl, right? I am not, I'm using everything that I can, but I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the airport and I am literally within like one pound, one pound below, like a 48, 49. I'm like right there. I'm like, yes, I've been on 50 quite a few times too. And I don't weigh it before I leave. I just trust that, you know, it's going to happen. But can I tell you too, that there have been times that I've gone to the airport with that, that mentality and it's been over 50 pounds. Have you ever had that happen to you? It's like, totally. You're like, oh man, I thought I, I thought I got it. I kind of, I kind of, uh, from traveling so much, I kind of got really good at figuring out like, what is that perfect weight? So when that happens to you, you have two options, right? You either pay the fee, which let's, it is not cheap. Um, uh, I feel like I won, I feel like it was like a hundred dollars. I'm like, what? Give me a hundred dollars. I can lift this thing. I'll do it myself. So you have two options, right? You pay the fee, you suck it up buttercup, you pay the fee or, you're that girl opening her suitcase on the floor at the airport in front of everybody else, removing things, putting things here, you know, stuffing stuff in your, in your carry on and trying to ask your husband or your friend to like, can you carry this? Oh my gosh. And sometimes you just throw stuff away because you are, you just don't even have time for it. Friends, some of you are doing the same thing. Some of you are trying to get to a destination that you know is possible, that you know is going to be so amazing, but some of you are carrying extra baggage that you aren't meant to carry. And you're either paying a big price for it. And in fact, I think other people are also paying a price because you're not, right, you're carrying this too much. And then there's some of you who are doing that. You're just messy. You're kind of like that girl in the middle of the airport trying to like figure it out. And then you're just putting things here. And it's a temporary fix to to a a solution that God wants to solve for you. It's a temporary fix. This is where I really want to impact, unpack, not impact. Hopefully it has impact. I mean, this is really where I want to spend the most of our time today to unpack literally the baggage. I believe the number one reason that most Christians are struggling in their businesses to succeed. It's not your strategy. It's not your copy. It's not your website. It's not your lack of motivation. It's not your lack of discipline, although that all those things could play into to play into effect. Right. But I think the majority of it, most of you have already purchased the programs. Most of you have already you, you've already watched the videos. You already know what you're supposed to do, but you haven't figured out what is it that's actually holding you back. I believe that you're carrying baggage that you were not meant to carry. And I refer to these as these are like a lot of the times the baggage we're carrying. These are soul wounds. These are soul wounds. 
And you don't always see these on the surface, but there is a battle that you're facing. You have soul wounds. There's extra baggage, extra things that's just lurking, that's in your bag, that is just, it's there, that you're searching for all the right answers and the solutions everywhere else when Jesus is like, I am your answer. Third John 1, 2. This verse is one that keeps me up at night. It's the one that excites me so much. Like it keeps me up at night in a good way. And it also gives me the sense of urgency to do what the Lord is calling me to do, to help women who are stuck, to help women who are walking around wounded, who to help women who are wearing a fake ID, trying to get to the place that they want to go. Women who are carrying way too much baggage to be able to get to the destination with fun and freedom. God wants to prosper you. Third John one, two says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. I don't think I've ever recognized this verse until the Lord pointed it out to me as I started learning about neuroscience and brain science. And I realized, wait a second, there's like, God's showing me some things here. And this scripture says that he wants to prosper us in all things as our soul prospers. And I believe the number one reason that women are struggling in business is because their souls are not prospering. They have soul wounds that are preventing them from prospering the way that God designed us to prosper. The price that Jesus paid to, to help us prosper. So the word soul wound, right? That's, that's, relatively newer to me. And so I want to break down what, what is she talking about? What does this mean? I've never really heard that before. I want you to pay attention as you read scripture in your quiet time, pay attention to where God specifically talks about soul. There's a lot of scripture that God talks about our soul and there's a reason. So I want to just break this down for you are made up of three parts. You are flesh, you are soul and your spirit. You may have heard that you are a soul wrapped in flesh with a spirit inside, right? This, I'm very visual. So I hope this kind of brings it to you. I want to break this down for you. What does this mean that you have these three different parts of who you are, flesh, soul, and spirit? Your flesh, that's your physical body, right? That's your outside. And a lot of times in scripture, it talks about dying to flesh, right? That's that earthly desire that isn't always good for us, or perhaps even that sinful nature that we, you know, Adam and Eve, like they were proof that they didn't really trust God. They really thought, thought God, God was holding out on them. He, they had everything that they could have ever wanted and needed. And they were still tricked to believe that they didn't have enough, all right? That they, they just needed to taste that fruit. And the flesh is probably, obviously, it's like your human strength. And listen, your flesh is not bad. It's not, I'm not here to shame you and make you think like, oh, flesh is terrible. Yes, your flesh can lead you in the wrong direction. And sometimes we are led by our flesh and that's what gets us in trouble. Okay, so here's the soul, our soul. It's our mind, our will, our emotions, our personality, our feelings. Logic plays a role in here. Our memory, right? Things that have happened to us. Um, so your soul Pay attention to where it says, it says, love the Lord of God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. What does that mean? God wants you to love him with your mind. Why do you think the mind is a battlefield? Why do you think you have wounds that aren't on the exterior, but they're deep and they're hidden? And I believe they're the very things often preventing you from getting to where God wants to take you. All right. And then you've got your spirit. Right. This is where we talk about this phrase. You were born again. Um, and so born again, what does that mean? Well, it means that your spirit became new. It became revived new in Christ. And so then the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. So your old spirit is dead. Your new spirit now has has life. And it's um, that is like salvation. Right. And so what is our spirit? Our spirits where we get wisdom from spirit literally is Holy Spirit. Um, heaven right? This, this higher, like what's actually that your faith, your spiritual gifts, all these things that you need to fulfill your calling. This is a whole other thing. I believe that many women don't really understand what their spirit entails and spiritual gifts. And they're not actually connecting with those things and they're not using those things in their business. So therefore they're doing it in their flesh and in their soul. And they're not doing what the Bible tells us to be spirit led. By the way, I want to pause here. I know there has to be someone here that you are like, wait a second, maybe I've heard some of this stuff before, or maybe not. I don't know if maybe God led you here and you're like, I don't even know who this crazy chick is, but something in me is stirring 
that's something in you is stirring is the Holy Spirit. So I just want to pause here and say, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you don't even, if you don't have that personal relationship with God and you're like, well, this girl talks to God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, like, I don't know. Maybe you've heard about other spirits. Maybe you heard about other things. Maybe you, I don't know. I want you to message me, please. Jesus has changed my life more than any success in my business. And he wants to change your life too. So there's this like tug of war. We see these rings here, right? The soul is in the center. And we got the spirit over here and the flesh over here. And there's this tug of war and it's going back and forth. And some of you are in this tug of war battle. Why? Because the enemy knows that your soul is so important. He knows that it matters and that Jesus paid a hefty price for your soul to be free. And the enemy wants you to live in bondage and slavery and, and fear and doubt and lack and poverty. He wants you to stay stuck there. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus, Jesus came to give you life. And not just life, but abundant life. Abundance, we've talked about it this week. Prosperity, we've talked about it this week. That's kingdom, my friend. Pros prospering is being part of the kingdom. It is your, it is, it's, it's your right. Not because of what you've done or what you've earned, but because of what Jesus has paid the price for. And so let's just talk about prosper again. Prosper by definition, to be successful, to thrive, to succeed, to be prosperous, to grow, to increase. God created it so that you could thrive. I love this quote by Charles Spurgeon. Consider how precious a soul must be when both God and the devil are after it. The enemy is warring for your mind warring for your emotions, warring for your, um, your, your soul, but so is God. And it's why God has given us his word. It's why God has given us tools. It's why God says armor up in this world. You're going to face battles, but don't worry. I've overcome it. This isn't supposed to scare you. This is supposed to empower you and encourage you to say, wait, maybe the things I've been searching for, maybe the, the strategies that I've been searching for, oh, God's actually wanting to like soul strategy. So what are these soul wounds? You, right? you might be asking like, wait, let me just, let me just I like explain this a little bit more. How do I get them? How do I get rid of them? Where did they come from? All these things. Listen, if I could just put this in its simplest form, soul wounds and in its simplest form, sin, they come from sin. And some of our soul wounds come from other people's sin. And some of our soul wounds come from our own bad choices, our own poor choices. And when you become new in Jesus, you get a new spirit, but your soul didn't become new. Your flesh didn't become new. You are still that person. And yes, Jesus covers it all. And you get to say, Hey, like, wait, are there wounds here that I'm still carrying that like Jesus paid that price? And I did that great exchange. I said, God, my yuck for your perfectness, for your perfection, your blood for mine. That's the great exchange. Listen, Communion is so powerful and so beautiful. And it's something that we started doing in our family regularly. Like you don't have to wait till that one Sunday morning, uh, once a month at church to do communion. There is power in the blood. There's power in the name of Jesus. And so these soul wounds that you have, Jesus paid the price for those also to be healed. And this is good. This, these sometimes can come from things like when you were a little girl, which we talked about the other day, some of your money mindset issues, they're not your fault. It's not like you just started worshiping money and like it became your God. No, you probably heard some things as a little girl and they've formed your beliefs around it. This goes for everything. Your beliefs around success, your beliefs around failure, your beliefs around who you are, all these things, right? So some of these things, some of these soul wounds that you may be carrying are things that they happen to you. Some of you have trauma. This is where I actually learned about this stuff because I wanted to heal from the trauma that, the, that I had gone through. And I knew that something was holding me back from getting to that next level of glory, that next destination. And I'm like, man, God's like, you're carrying the wrong ID, Heather. You don't know who you are and you don't know who I am, who is the giver of the ID, which that matters where you're getting your ID from. Whoever like, you know, creates that and hands it to you, that's important. If it's coming from a fake place, well, you're only going to get so far. And then he's like, yeah, Heather, you've got some baggage. Let me show you what you're carrying. You're trying to get to where I want you to go, but you've got some extra junk you're carrying around that you were never meant to carry. And sometimes again, 
I think sometimes we often want to look at everybody else as our problems are from them. I can, I can do this. But one of the most beautiful things is allowing the Holy Spirit to penetrate your heart and say, God, where have I made bad choices? Where have I, where do I have sin? Where do I have something in agreement with the kingdom of darkness that is not of you so that you can receive freedom and healing and wholeness and forgiveness. Forgiveness is key. So here is what I see happening. What we do is, myself included, until God opened my eyes, we try to cover up these wounds with a band-aid. Some of us, we do this out of shame. We do this out of pain. We do this out of unforgiveness. We do, we do this sometimes out of denial. If you have the Holy Spirit, if you are born again, he is your advocate, your helper. He is your teacher. He is supposed to convict you, not in a bad, shameful way, but in a freedom way to call you higher. And so what we do is we end up, we put band-aids on our wounds and we cover them up rather than letting the healer fully heal them. I'll give you an example, right? Like a real life situation. Has you ever been sick and took an antibiotic only to find that that re- it felt good for a little while, right? And then that reoccurring symptom it came up, right? The symptom kind of went away, but then it came back. The issue came back. This happened to me as a child with ear infections. And so I, you know, my mom would do what the doctor said, put her on antibiotics. And what we realized uh, is that those antibiotics were just covering up a problem, but they weren't actually getting to the root of the problem. We as business owners often can try to fix our problem by something like an antibiotic. And that's not getting to the root of the problem until we got to the root of the issue, which usually is your gut. If you have health issues, I just want to encourage you, your gut and your soul. Let's take care of those things. Otherwise, that problem comes back. And that's what happens a lot. Women try to jump from one calling to another and they think maybe this is going to solve the problem. I see it in network marketing a lot. I did it. I, you know, I did three different companies. And yes, they were all financially successful. But what happened was uh, the same root, the same issues that I had in the first one, I had in the second one, I had in the third one. And while I saw fruit and there was good stuff that came from it, that underlying deep rooted issue was still there. That's what we do a lot. We try to fix our symptoms and we never get to the source of our problems. The other day we talked about money, right? It's a great example. Sometimes we might think like, well, we need to work harder. You know, maybe we need to get a new job. We need to try harder. What if the issue is deeper than that? I share this testimony because it's so amazing. But one of my clients, she came to me and we talked, we did a coaching call and um, she was just wrestling. She was struggling in her business. Her revenue just kind of was at a standstill. And she's like, I, I don't know. And she really like, there were things that needed to happen in order for her to continue to have her business running. And we did a call and she got to the root of something, something that nobody else wanted to tell her. Listen, this is part of why I struggle with saying what I do, because I think that the work that I do, it calls you higher, but it re- requires you to dig deep. And it requires you to get really honest with yourself. And what happened was when she actually realized this root, this lie, this yuck, this sin, whether that was from other people or from herself, right? She took care of it. She took it before the Lord. And she said, Jesus, I want to give you this, this great exchange. You paid this price for me. Her business increased by 117%, literally within like a month. So all these things she's searching for, like, do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? It's like, God's like, come to me and I want to heal you. God wants to heal whatever is in you that's hurting. And some of you have been putting band-aids over the hurt for so long that you don't, might not even know that they're there. And so while going through my neuroscience program, I was blown away at what the Holy Spirit was teaching me in conjunction with the doctor that I was working with. And I was able to correlate scripture with the science. And I was, God was just showing me that science simply confirms what I already said. And I was literally like mind blown, like blown away. And I'm not super sciencey. Like I'm not, I'm not super uh, into all that, but I was fascinated by this. The science just confirms what God says. And so I saw, I saw a gap though. I saw that a lot of what I hear in the neuroscience space is dealing with a lot of the, the mind, but from not from a soul perspective, just from like this thing up here, but it wasn't actually getting to the root of it. And if I could just say it really bluntly, what I believe it's, it's healing and deliverance and deliverance might be a really scary word to you. I was not, again, I was raised in the church, but we did not talk about deliverance and demons are not, they're, they're, they're not meant to scare us. <laughs> Jesus paid the price and we see Jesus casting them out everywhere. And so I just want to say this too. There's a difference between being oppressed and being possessed. If you're a believer, I do not believe that you can be possessed by a demon. 
However, I do believe that many believers are walking around oppressed and they need deliverance. These spirits are attached, right? They're attached and they're impacting you. And, and how do they get there? Well, sin, sin, whether it's other people or yourself, traumas, past experiences, what people have said to you, maybe in the third grade or what your mom or dad said to you or a friend or whatever, um, pains, all those things. That's how the enemy also could come in. Bitterness is sin. Anger, not the righteous kind, because that's good. Anger, unforgiveness, those things are wounds that are wounding your soul. Coming into agreement with anything, fear, fear is a sin. God says, fear not, I am with you. Fear not for I am your God. Jesus didn't die for you just to walk around wounded. The Bible says that by his stripes, you are healed. Are you whole? Are you healed? Or do you have soul wounds that are actually preventing you from thriving? Because Jesus didn't die for you to carry that extra baggage around and weigh you down. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. So let's talk about four keys to healing your soul wounds. Number one, you have to recognize that they're there. You got to like slow down to speed up instead of just continuing to brush these yuck, whatever it is, like under the rug, allow whatever the Lord shows you, like take a second, notice any patterns in your life. Chances are, if you've tried multiple businesses, you may have seen some things reoccurring like me. Like I saw I had money issues and they were happening in every single business. They just looked a little different, right? But the root of it was there and the fruit from that root was not good. So God wants to get to the root. So you have to recognize where, or where, what is this? Where is this coming from? What is this? The Holy Spirit wants to show you areas that can be healed. And oftentimes this means, again, you have to slow down. So you ambitious go-getter girl, slow down. Rest is not a four-letter bad word. Rest is a gift from God. Unplugging, disconnecting, stopping the hustle. Listen, busyness is a sign of lack of intimacy. And sometimes we remain busy and we wear that as a badge of honor because we don't actually want to get to a place of intimacy, sometimes with ourselves, sometimes with the people in our lives, and sometimes with the Lord. Slow down. Don't sweep your junk under the rug. Write it out. I encourage all my clients, write it out. Take note. Journaling is so powerful in so many different levels. There's literally things that happen in your brain when you write stuff out. And I also believe that the Lord talks through to us a lot through our journaling. And it's a way to process. So one of the things I teach women I work with is to take your thoughts captive, right? Part of that is take them captive and then get curious about them, record them, write them down. But you got to recognize it first. This is, this is work. It's deep work. I'm going to challenge you today. If you want more from God, then you have to be willing to give him more. And sometimes that that's those, those wounds, the pain that you've been carrying. And so this work is necessary. If you want to get to where God wants you to go. So step number one is to recognize it. Get curious about it. Don't shame it. Don't think I shouldn't feel this way. Say, God, why do I feel this way? Well, why am I believing? What happened to me that shouldn't have happened to me? Which leads me into this next thing is to repent and forgive. Repentance, right? Repentance is us going to the Lord and saying, Lord, forgive me. I, I didn't realize. And I'm going to turn away. I'm going to change my thoughts. If you look at the, um, the deeper meaning of what does it mean to repent? It's to turn, to change your thoughts, change your mind. I was going one way and now I'm like, wait, God showed me something. I'm going to go the other way. And sometimes in that repentance, we also have to, so we're seeking forgiveness from the father, but there's three other areas of forgiveness that I want to highlight today that I think are really important. Yes, God, we want to repent from him. But sometimes we also need to ask other people for forgiveness. That's important. The Bible says that we want to kind of clear the air. If you've done something that you know was not, not right, the Bible says we're supposed to ask for forgiveness from that person. And then there's also that giving forgiveness to others that don't deserve it. Most likely they're not, they're not sorry and they, they, their life is going on. Right. Some of you are carrying around things that are wounds that other people are like, oh, whatever their life's going on. And your life is kind of staying stuck. Forgive those people. And that doesn't necessarily mean telling them that you're forgiving. That means in your heart and to the God between you and him that you're forgiving them. And this last one, I feel like this is a hard one for many of us. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for making the wrong choice. For doing something. Forgiveness is beautiful in every way, from God to other people, to, to people who, from other people, for other people, and for yourself. That's step number two. Step number three is to refute. 
it's a fancy word learned it in my brain science you know neuroscience stuff but really what does that mean it means like to prove wrong let your brain see that whatever you're believing is not true according to god it's not true According to some of your experiences in your life, it's not true. Again, this is that stuck in a story. Remember, new level, new devil. That's not true. We're actually going to say new glory, new story. God wants to take you to a next level of glory. In order to do that, he wants to create a new story in your head. He wants to give you a fresh vision. And in order to do that, right, we have to say, wait, what I'm actually believing, that lie that he showed me, the one that I recognize, that I actually took care of, I repented for it, I, I offered forgiveness, got forgiveness, all those things. Oh, well, now I get to refute this. And in this refuting, this is where we can also renounce. Listen, re repentance is between you and God. Renouncing is with you in the kingdom of darkness. And this is where you get to use your mouth. Listen, the world has figured some of this stuff out, saying that you can you know, speak things into it, that your words matter. Your words do matter because God said it. That's a principle in the Bible. That your words have the power to speak life or death. So you want to verbally say, I am coming out of agreement with the kingdom of darkness. I renounce fear. I renounce poverty. I renounce bitterness. I renounce anger. I renounce unforgiveness. I renounce shame. I renounce whatever it is, friend. There is power in that. That is saying, I am no longer, I'm no longer a, a bonded to this thing. I am a child of God and I'm coming out of this. Renouncing, refuting, it all matters. And this last part, reclaiming God's truth. This, from a science perspective, is what we often refer to as rewiring your brain. You may know that you have neural pathways. They're going in your brain, and they're actually created to conserve energy. It's everything you do, say, like everything you think, it takes energy. That's why you need rest at night, because your brain's going all the time. And so you create these new neural pathways, and depending on what you were, you know, all a neural pathway is, is a repeated thought. And that's all a belief is. A belief is a repeated thought. So you have these neural pathways going and God's like, I want to sever that thing. That's how you, you, through repentance, through forgiveness, through refuting, through announcing, you are severing that tie with whatever that is. And then you get to create new truths. The only reason you believe what you believe is because you've been told it and you said, okay, I'll, I'll agree with that. That's how easily the enemy attacks so many of us is through coming into agreement with whatever he's speaking. There's a reason why God says to meditate on his word day and night. He also says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Sometimes we can look really polished on the outside. This is why I have a coach. Usually I have more than one because I know that I can, I can look polished here, but I'll go to my coach and I'll just let it rip. And so often those things that come out of my mouth when I'm not guarded and I'm not trying to, um, whether it's teach or perhaps impress or whatever, um, I'll say the things that are deeply in my heart. Those things are important to have someone to be able to point those out to. And I believe you don't need a coach all the time. Yes, there are gifts and I, but Holy Spirit will do it too. Again, he's my favorite coach. And so you want to meditate on the word of God. Listen, the world has also taken meditation and twisted it. The enemy cannot create. And so what he does is he distorts, he counterfeits. He, he has the opposite of, and it's just oftentimes a little twisted in the entrepreneur space, new age, you see this happening now, but a lot of those new age principles are rooted in biblical truths. They're rooted in biblical principles because the enemy can't create a principle, but he's taking God's principles that he knows are true. Like your words have power. They do. What the problem is with the kingdom of darkness side of it is that you have become a God. You have, you, they, he doesn't want you to realize that that power that you have or that the gifts that you have that you know, manifesting, we talk about that. God is the one that manifests and he uses us to do things, but there's, there's a selfish ambition to the other side, right? Whereas God wants us to do these things for him, for his glory, for the kingdom. So we have to stop fighting the wrong battle. We have to claim the victory from Jesus that he's already paid. He's already won. Healing your soul so that you can prosper is the key. Which brings me to my final point. Make sure you're not the weapon formed against yourself that's causing you not to prosper. I'm gonna say that again. Make sure that you are not the weapon that's being formed against yourself it's causing you 
not to prosper. God is for you, friend. It is time for you to be for you too. Getting to the root of your wounds, the lies you've been told, the lies that you've accepted, maybe the sin that's been lurking that you haven't really dealt with, Jesus wants to heal it. He wants to heal whatever that is. So I know this is deep and I know this is heavy, but healing is a feeling. And let me tell you from someone who has dug deep in this and done a lot of deep, deep work, I had to face some demons. And I don't say that as just like, no, no, no. You really have to face those demons. But you face them knowing that on the other side of this, it's work and it's painful sometimes to have those wounds exposed, but there is freedom on the other side of that. Like sometimes we can be like the Israelites. We just want to go back to our junk, right? The Bible says that the dog goes back to his vomit. Don't be that person that continues to go back to the vomit, trying to fix a problem that it's like, that's not the solution. God has a plan for you and it's good. And I hope you're ready to go there, which for this final thing, what do you need? You need a travel buddy. Y'all, I cannot wait to have a retreat. I can't wait to squeeze some of you in person. I can't wait to, to go somewhere and be on a beach with you and experience the Lord and whatever he has for us. But traveling, the final thing you need to get to your destination smoothly, you need others. You are not meant to journey this alone. These girls look like they're having a good time. I'd like to go where they're going. But can I encourage you first and foremost, your first travel buddy, your first travel partner, it's God. You need him. Jesus, you need him too. And you most definitely need the Holy Spirit. He wants to do this journey with you. And not only do you need him, I believe you need others. There's a reason Moses had Aaron and Ur holding up his arms in the battle. There's a reason that God gave David Jonathan. There's a reason that God gave Adam Eve. There's a reason that Jesus had disciples. He was teaching them how to work with him And he was teaching them how to work together. You need sisters in Christ. Sisters who will pray for you. Sisters who will encourage you. Sisters who will understand the struggles that you're facing. Sisters who will support you. Sisters who will speak the truth in love. This is why I was talking to my husband about this the other day. I am so drained by surface conversations because I just want to know really what's going on with you. And I want to know really how I can support you. And I want to know really how can I help you? Speaking the truth in love is sometimes what we need. And we need people in our corner who are going to call us higher. So not only is God obviously waiting to partner with you in every way, that's what this whole week is about. How do you partner with God? And I, of course, would love to partner with you if that is where you are feeling. So if you've been blessed this week, I hope you are. I hope you share this. I hope you let people know um, about what it is at my business tree and what I do. If you're looking for more support, I would love to be that person for you. Maybe that's joining the inner circle. Maybe that's joining the made to flow mastermind. Maybe that's working one-on-one together. And maybe that's just hanging around, listening to the podcast and just gleaning from this. Maybe it's, maybe it's that but we are, I am so honored you're here. I'm humbled you're here. I am thankful that God brought you here. And I pray that you were so blessed by something this week. And so I want to leave you with this. First John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. You were not made to fear, right? And we talked a little about this. That is that fear response. Like when something threatens us in some way, whether it's a literal, a literal fear or a, um, I mixed those two words, a literal or figurative fear, You respond in a couple different ways. Like you fight, you flight, or you freeze. But my friend, you were made to fly. And so my question is, where, where does God want to take you? Where is he beckoning you to saying, this is your next level, friend. I want to go here with you. What has been holding you back? Have you been trying to fix your problems through a better business strategy or a better social media or uh, whatever it is? And again, not I'm not saying that those things are bad. I have hired people to do all of those things. But until you get to the root of your issue, you're going to keep struggling. So where is God taking you? What does he want to heal? What does he want to fix? What burden does he want to carry? Number one, what ID are you carrying? And are you carrying the right one? Do you need work in your identity in Christ? Number two, do you need a vision? Do you need a ticket? Do you need better understanding of, wait, what is this thing that I'm actually called to do? Why am I here in the first place? 
Do you have wounds and baggage that you're carrying that God's like, I don't want you to carry that. And you have people to do life with. That's what you need. And I am here to cheer you on. And again, I would love to be that person for you if that is where you are and what you're looking for. So here's your homework. These videos will be coming down. We will be putting them into the inner circle so that you do have access to them at, at all time. But you have all weekend. I'm going to even leave them up next week. So I know some of you work and whatnot. I don't want to rush you. Um, with that being said, I would love for you to take away. I know today is kind of a heavy day, but it is necessary. And no one's talking about it because, listen, healing your soul doesn't sound well, it kind of does, I guess, uh, but people want to do strategy, but nobody wants to talk about like the sin and the yuck and the pain and the hurt and the things that you're carrying. And so I want you to like, like not try to fix your problems with the wrong solutions. So I would love for you to share your takeaways from day five. Um, share it on social, share, share it in our group. And I will be announcing the winners of everything at next week, since we'll be taking the, taking all the videos down. And so as a reminder, um, the inner circle, it is open. And so there's a multiple different giveaways we're doing. And for those of you who are like, I need more of this, I need more of, of this community. I need more of Heather in my life. Uh, those of you who are that, and you join the inner circle, you will be entered into my signature made to flow mastermind program. That's going to be opening up in 2023. I'm, I'm working with a group of women through it right now. If you want on that wait list, you can absolutely message my team, message myself or email my team. We can get you and save you a spot on the wait list for January of 2023. Um, you can do that also. So again, I'm just going to real quickly run through Seek First CEO. What is it? The inner circle. You get coaching, mentoring, discipling from me, from my team, and from an amazing group of women. A lot of women who are watching this, they are, they're, they're in the community. They get it and they see it. God is doing supernatural things in us. Healing, that's supernatural, right? So there's all kinds of that goodness. So what do you get? You get weekly group coaching from me. You get monthly workshops from me, industry experts. You get networking events so you can connect with these other women, support each other, work together as the body. There's a whole bunch of bonus, bonus things like the business meeting with heaven. There's masterminds going on. There's Bible studies going on. There's book studies going on, all these different things. Um, and so you get access to a vault of content, stuff that I've already recorded. Some of it's you know, several years ago and some of it's, and we continue to add every month, fresh new content. And then you also do as a member, get discounts to one-on-one -on -one coaching and the retreats. So there's a call, also a couple bonus things for you. There's a number of different courses that I give you access to well over $2,000 worth of things all for 47 bucks. So I would love to see you on the inside again, an honor, a privilege to hang out with you this week. I pray that you are so blessed and I pray, um, and I'm just going to pray for everybody right now, because I know that there's just, like, God's doing, done a lot today. He's done a lot this week. And so I just want to pray over each of you. So father, I thank you. God, again, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for the women who have participated in this. And Lord, we just bind the plans of the enemy. God, he has a plan for all of us. And so we just bind those plans and we loose heaven's plans over each woman listening to this. God, you have a plan for her life. You have the vision for her. You have the exact thing she needs to put in that luggage to get her to where you want to take her. You want her to get rid of those wounds. Jesus, you paid a hefty price and we thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. You are worthy to be praised. And so we thank you for that. God, you have placed each, um, each person, people in their lives. Lord, I pray that they recognize that, that, that relationships are a gift. I know you are in a season of healing hurt relationships and people who feel lonely, God, I just pray that you put the right people in their path. So Lord, as you continue to heal, Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for moving. And we can't wait to hear of the testimonies that come from this week and all that you have in, in the future for us. So you get the glory and honor and praise in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.